Thank you for clicking play to start this presentation. Note, to control the presentation's pace, save this file under a new name, go to the file menu and click on clear recording, then save it again. If you do that, the limitations below will not apply to you. When using the Apple program Keynote for presentations with audio like this one, pressing the escape key on your keyboard will stop the presentation. When you then click the play button, the presentation will start at the beginning. It does not allow you to continue where you left off. So please prepare to watch this portion in its entirety. The duration of this presentation is shown in the top right hand corner of this slide. You're about to watch the GoFish Global Structure Training Full Structure Chapter 4 of 14. Please take notes on how to make this presentation better. You can use your mobile phones for quick ideas and send them as they come to you to info at gofishglobal.org or when you have more time to type out the ideas, please send them from your computer. Let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, thank you for every one of our many blessings, from the smallest to the biggest. Please bless our bishops, pastors, other priests, the religious, group leaders, and everyone else who stands as a witness to your goodness. Thank you for the opportunity to learn a little more today about how to share the good news with all nations. And please forgive us our sins, that we might be receptive to your word, and so that those who come in contact with us might meet you, through us, most clearly. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. St. Michael the Archangel, please defend us and our church in this hour of battle. Mother Mary, intercessor of all evangelists, please pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Chapters We've already covered Chapter 1, Introduction and Gophish Global Philosophy, Chapter 2, Overview of the Structure, and Chapter 3, Definitions. This is Chapter 4, Main Crews of the Diocesan Structure, the Port and Docks. After that, we will have, on another segment, Chapter 5, Establishing the Port and Docks Across the Diocese, Chapter 6, Fish Processing Crews and the Net, Chapter 7, Diocesan Structure in Detail, Chapter 8, Running Welcoming Events, Chapter 9, Aspire to be noticed. Chapter 10, Burnout Relief Mechanism. Chapter 11, Key Unique Strengths of Go Fish Global and Strengthening Ideas. Chapter 12, GoFishGlobal.org. Chapter 13, A to Z Summary. And Chapter 14, Closing Comments. Chapter 4, Main Crews of the Diocesan Structure, The Port and Docks. To cover the material in this presentation, the narrator will be speaking a little more quickly than usual. Please jot down any roles that appear in this presentation that you feel called to do. Also, make a note of roles you feel people you know might be able to do. Depending on skill level, some of the positions mentioned throughout this presentation could be excellent opportunities for recent graduates who study the required professions. Judging their skill level would be up to those within the structure in charge of choosing those people. Even if they are not experienced enough to take on the primary role within the structure, they could be given a chance to support the person in that role. For example, someone who has studied culinary arts could be asked to join the Port Welcoming Event Food Coordinator. Another approach would be to have the experts who make up the port train non-experts to carry out the same roles the port hands hold, but at the docks. So, for example, the port creative coordinator at a port training session could pass along ideas to a non-expert who has been chosen to be the dock creative coordinator on St. Martha Parish's dock. This is the most cumbersome chapter of the structure presentation. But it is also where you will be introduced to some of the most dynamic positions of the structure. Envision gathering a gifted team of Catholics to provide the unchurched newcomers with 
a very special experience. While God can touch the fish's lives dramatically with little or no effort on our part, if we recruit godly, excellent crews and have them apply their God-given talents at focal points, it will help make a great first impression on the fish. The goal is to help people really feel welcome and at home in the Catholic Church. Under the GoFish Global concept, those focal points are the port welcoming events and the dock welcoming events. You will learn more about them in detail in Chapter 8 of this presentation. Groups that hold regular meetings can also be trained to be welcoming events. In this chapter, we will be learning about the titles and roles of the port hands and dock hands. The tasks listed for each of the positions you will see are not highly detailed. They are intended to allow for some flexibility. However, we suggest that those who take on these roles accomplish the tasks listed to the best of their ability. Ready? Let's talk about the first of the main structure crews, the port, the diocesan level support crew. Establishing the port and recruiting port hands. The port is a prayerfully chosen crew in charge of establishing, supporting, and helping keep afloat the go-fish structure across a diocese. Members of this crew are referred to as port hands. They are usually chosen a with the aid of the bishop, b by a person or people appointed by a bishop or someone else in charge, or c by a go-fish representative from outside of that diocese with permission of the bishop. Port names. Ports are named after the diocese they serve. For example, if the Archdiocese of Chicago were to establish a port, it would be called the Port of Chicago. All of the port hands must be able to attend all of the monthly training sessions, and during the port training expeditions, they must be able to perform as fishers. This is a suggested requirement to be able to become part of the port. They set the example for the entire diocese. Port hand titles and duties. The first port hand is the port liaison. The first task of the port liaison is to establish a five to nine person diocesan sounding board for the port. The sounding board is a resource to which the port turns for feedback on any topic whenever the port deems it necessary. Board members should be wise, neutral, have different cultural backgrounds and spiritualities, and be from different geographical areas of the port of the diocese. The second task of the port liaison is to recruit a crew of diocesan expansionists who will help the port liaison establish the structure across the diocese. The port liaison and diocesan expansionists must all be well trained on the structure. The parishes are then divided among the port liaison, the diocesan expansionists, and, if the bishop wishes, the GoFish Global Home Office expansionists. More on ex expansionists later. The port liaison, with the help of the diocesan expansionists and sometimes the home office expansionists, establish the GoFish structure across the diocese. For every parish for which its pastor grants permission to use the GoFish global structure, the port liaison must coordinate the recruitment of the five initial parish coordinators. Those five people per parish are called the dock startup teams. The dock startup teams must be made aware of their parish's geographical boundaries. During and after the initial structure has been built across the diocese, the primary role of the port liaison is that of being the person through whom bishops, pastors, dock liaisons, the entire GoFish net, and the diocesan sounding board communicates with the port. The port liaison supports docks in the recruitment of dock hands when asked to do so by the docks, and recruits port hands when they retire or are burned out. See Burnout Mechanism, Chapter 10. The second port hand is the port spiritual coordinator. The spiritual coordinator is the last one chosen to join the port. They serve for no more than two years. Once the port has been established, the entire port decides upon a spiritual director. If the vote is split, then straws are drawn. We recommend you choose a priest, deacon, sister, or brother. The bishop could also appoint someone. 
The port spiritual coordinator primarily leads the port in prayer at port meetings and is the spiritual counselor of the port. It encourages port hands to A. Pray B. Receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation C. Attend Mass and receive Communion regularly and only if in grace. It informs other port hands about retreats, healing services, spiritual education opportunities, etc. Helps promote inexpensive or free retreats for all members of the net. Instructs all port hands on the burnout mechanism. See Chapter 10. When a new port hand comes on board, this is one of the first things the port spiritual coordinator mentions to them. It applies the burnout mechanism to burned out port hands when necessary. The third port hand is the port meeting coordinator. They primarily prepare the itinerary for all port meetings, schedules, announces, and coordinates and serves by presiding over port meetings. They run meetings as workshops to minimize discussion to what is necessary and to maximize output. That is to say, although planning and discussing what the port should do is important, only a little amount of time should be spent on such things. The majority of the time should be spent having every port hand carry out their duties. If a particular port hand's duties have already been done, then the port meeting coordinator should have the port hand help another port hand with their duties or have them help the rest of the port with the tasks that they are undertaking as a team. The port meeting coordinator also trains people on how to oversee dock deanery meetings. Dioceses are sometimes divided into groups of parishes that are intended to work together. Each of those groups of parishes are a deanery. The meetings about which we speak here are meetings where the docks of the parishes within each deanery meet to discuss plans to work together on outreach and evangelization efforts. Once the people are trained, the port meeting coordinator schedules the dock deanery meetings and assigns those who were trained to run them. The fourth port hand is the port training coordinator. They recruit a, as large of a port training crew as necessary to help carry out the tasks required of this role. They learn and teach about the different spiritualities and cultures that make up part of the Catholic Church, especially the ones found within their diocese. They inform the doc liaisons about the gophishglobal.org website, particularly the section where local methods are posted, and, if necessary, teaches them how to use the site. If the bishop has or prefers a specific uh, set of methods taught, the port training coordinator points this out to them. They also communicate with all dock liaisons to encourage every dock hand to attend at least four out of 12 monthly port training sessions a year, and all crews within their parish to attend at least one per year, pastor permitting. It gives five to 10 minute church teachings at every port meeting, which addresses first matters about which your geographical area seems to struggle than other catechism teachings. They primarily offer monthly port training sessions. See the next slide. But they can also schedule additional training sessions like Bible studies and catechism classes. If short on time, CDs and online videos could be used to teach. These classes should be offered to all doc training coordinators who in turn can share those resources with their parish net. Mock training sessions for all methods presented to trainees should be incorporated into the training sessions. Practice helps greatly, and some trainees will need to see how methods look before using them. Note, all monthly port training sessions culminate in an actual hands-on expedition to practice on a live audience what the trainees learned. Port training coordinator continued. So yes, their primary role is to train all docs and their respective parishes net pastor permitting, using the best practices available and covering the following. A. The GoFish Global Outreach and Evangelization Training, the full O&E. Unless suggested by a bishop or pastor, this is the standard training that is offered at every port and dock training session. It is intended to be a quick way to get people started. But there exist many more extensive ways to prepare for outreach and evangelization, and the port training coordinator should point out to the trainees uh, sources from which other methods can be learned particularly if they are working well within their diocese. B. They teach legal ways to discuss God in the public school system. They seek the advice, the advice of organizations in your country. Gateways to Better Education, gtbe.org, offers this information in the U.S. on a state-by-state -state basis. 
Free legal defense services for those who have been sued for speaking about God in public areas is offered in the U.S. by the Alliance Defense Fund, ADF, and the Liberty Council. If you do not know what is offered in your country, please contact these organizations to see if they can help. C. Basic human resource management. For example, they teach dock hands how to identify the top skills or gifts of those within their parish nets, among other things. This will help each member of each parish's net feel empowered and affirmed. D. They identify, encourage, and recruit highly motivated parishioners willing to carry out their own missions. Well, that's what they teach. They teach the, the docs how to identify, encourage, and recruit the highly motivated parishioners willing to carry out their own missions. And E. They teach how to be open to ideas that arise within the parishes of those attending the training sessions. The fifth port hand is the Port Expedition Coordinator. They primarily coordinate logistics matters for all port expeditions. These are limited to the ones carried out during port training sessions. They manage the fishers, port hands, and trainees during the port training expeditions. They regularly encourage the dock liaisons to motivate their dock hands to attend at least four out of 12 port training sessions a year, one every three months. They communicate with all the dock training coordinators and dock packers and shippers coordinators to encourage their respective nets to attend port outreach and evangelization training sessions at least once a year. They do not have to communicate this through the dock liaison. They can contact individuals in those nets, especially crew leaders, directly, but should ask the dock liaison if the pastor has approved of this communication. Side note, in addition to informing trainees about outreach methodologies, port training sessions give trainees a chance to see that they and their parishes are not alone in the outreach and evangelization mission. This is one of the main reasons why port training sessions are so important. It generates enthusiasm. The sixth port hand is the Port Packers and Shippers Coordinator. They primarily manage the Port Packers and Shippers to ensure that they carry out their duties in a proper and timely manner. This person, like the rest of the port and dock hands, must be a good communicator with a pleasant personality as they also recruit. See below. They aid the expedition coordinator by categorizing all participants at the port training sessions by their self-professed gifts and demographics. At times, this will help the port expedition coordinator assign duties to the trainees. They help the port expedition coordinator encourage the dock meeting coordinators and the dock packers and shippers coordinators to send their parish nets to port fishing training sessions. Dock hands themselves must attend at least four out of 12 port training sessions a year, one every three months. The Port Packers and Shippers Coordinator keeps a record of the port training session attendees, including the attendees' name, contact information, parish, and whether or not they are a member of their parish's dock. And they find out from the port shippers which fish have recently found a home in the church and invite, recruit those fish lovingly to join the outreach effort at their respective parishes. See also the explanation on boats and fishers in the O&E Outreach and, Exp and Evangelization training presentation. The sixth port hand, uh, seventh port hand is the port welcoming event coordinator. They must be dynamic people, a dynamic people person that can work with multiple people and multiple personalities simultaneously. They must have a professional background in event production with a solid understanding of the potential spiritual and psychological needs of the fish and other attendees. They must understand the importance of event design as well. While they should be detached from turnout expectations, they should have a high uh, expectation regarding social, spiritual, and psychological impact. First, they must become well trained on the Go Fish welcoming event methods. Then, they must recruit and train the port welcoming event crew on how to put on dynamic and highly attractive welcome welcoming events. See Chapter 8 to find the titles and roles of that crew. Primarily, the port welcoming event coordinator sets up and coordinates monthly Go Fish designed port welcoming events, be they blue, off of church property, or purple, on church property. They must set up at least one per diocese. These events are to be one monthly Go Fish port welcoming event for every language that is commonly spoken within their diocese. These events are to be designed to be appealing to those within the demographic pool they are addressing at each event. The eighth port hand is the Port Website Development Coordinator. The primary task of this position is that of developing, creating, and managing the Ministry Finder website. They keep an eye out for methods being used across the diocese and post them on the GoFish Global website under their diocese. They keep track of the success rate of each method and identify those that seem to work best as best diocesan practices on GoFishGlobal.org under the Outreach and Evangelization Methods section. 
This will be a resource for the entire diocesan net as well as others from around the world. The ninth port hand is the port website entry personnel. Actually, they are multiple people. Website entry personnel will be supervised by the website development coordinator. They enter the names of all the ministries by parish around the diocese with all pertinent contact information, meeting times, and other ministry details into the Ministry Finder and Event Finder website. If in the future the GoFish Global website posts these as well, then they would be in charge of doing this. This is critical because it keeps the website updated for all users, including the shippers, who will be constantly using it to find the fish a home within that diocese. The tenth port hand is the Port Creative Coordinator. They primarily work closely with the Port Welcoming Event Coordinator to help develop a welcoming event that is of a quality comparable to the most attractive secular nightlife hotspots in the local area. They seek and manage the best videographers, designers, copywriters, event designers, etc. that will offer services pro bono or at a price the port agrees upon. They create the Fish Welcoming DVD that explains what fish should expect to find good and bad within the Catholic Church. This DVD is to be played for fish upon entering the port welcoming event for the first time. These are short DVDs, they're not supposed to be extensive in time. The DVD must be done professionally, taking into account the findings of top spirituality and psychology experts in order to help the fish understand why it is important that they remain in the church. It would be convenient to have it on DVD because the welcoming event coordinator could then have someone play it for the fish attending the welcoming event on any computer that plays DVDs. The Port Creative Coordinator also creates video, a video responding to most common attacks against the Catholic Church. This could be posted online, and the fish could be directed to watch it. If needed, it could also be put on DVD and played. Note, while there will be one or more such videos on the gofishglobal.org website, it could be helpful to make videos that are specific to the local area. Ideas can always be taken from the videos found on gofishglobal.org. The eleventh port hand is the Port Ecumenical Liaison and Promoter. This is a sensitive position and should be carried out by a suitable individual. The Port Ecumenical Liaison and Promoter works with every Doc Ecumenical Liaison and Promoter to develop relationships with non-Catholic churches and other faiths. In cases where there is no Doc at a parish, they would work alone in those geographical areas. Since no other person will cover those geographical areas, they should recruit a team to help cover those areas first. If necessary, they work through members of other Christian denominations in order to acquire meetings with pastors at which a GoFish Global presentation could be given. They keep track of all communications with the various churches in the geographical area covered by the diocese using the FISH contact information Excel spreadsheet found in the downloadables section of GoFishGlobal.org. Primarily, the Port Ecumenical Liaison and Promoter promotes to all non-Catholic Christian churches the version of GoFish Global for non-Catholic Christians. The twelfth and final port hand title and their duty is the Port Finance Manager. This person must be dynamic and gifted in the area of fundraising. If any of the other port hands or anyone else are is willing to work to make money for the port, that is not only admissible, it is encouraged. All port hands are encouraged to request donations for the port. They put together a budget which covers the port's needs. They manage the funds of the port. Port funds are primarily to be used for the outreach and evangelization efforts carried out during the port training sessions. They handle accounting and prepare monthly financial statements which will include, at minimum, a balance sheet and an income statement for the port. These reports must include full disclosure of all funds that come in as well as those that went out and the beginning balance for one month must be the ending balance for the previous month. After the GoFish structure has been in place for some time, the finance manager might be able to prepare consolidated financial statements which would incorporate the financial statements of all the docs as well. So here is the port. First the port liaison, then the spiritual coordinator, meeting coordinator, training coordinator, expedition coordinator, packers and shippers coordinator, welcome, welcoming event coordinator, Website Development Coordinator, Website Entry Personnel, note the docs do not have these positions, the Creative Coordinator, the Ecumenical Liaison and Promoter, and the Finance Manager. The next slide presents the port hands with pictures for each. 
port liaison, spiritual coordinator, meeting coordinator, training coordinator, expedition coordinator, packers and shippers coordinator, welcoming event coordinator, website development coordinator, website entry personnel, creative coordinator, ecumenical liaison and promoter, and the port finance manager. Let's talk a little bit about those monthly port training sessions. The port training sessions put on by the port are held monthly. They include A, fishing training using the outreach and evangelization segment two presentations. B, a public expedition, which are hands-on experiences applying go fish techniques on a large, possibly secular crowd. We recommend that all port hands and dock hands be required to attend at least four of the 12 monthly port training sessions a year. Due to the fact that port hands and dock hands set the example for those in their respective dioceses and parishes, if they cannot meet this requirement, they should not accept a position within the port or a dock. Attend at least one training session before starting. It is recommended that all individuals who have been newly recruited at parishes to perform outreach and evangelization attend at least one of these monthly port or dock training sessions before attempting to carry out expeditions to fulfill their missions. Note. The monthly public expeditions, which are live, hands-on, outreach and evangelization training sessions, are an important part of the GoFish Global Training. These events plant seeds in the hearts of the unchurched, give the Catholic Church more exposure. This also encourages the children and grandchildren of Catholics to consider looking into the church. They help the boats and fishers overcome their fear of reaching out. Now let's talk about the other major crews, the docks, the parish level support crew. Parish level supporting crews are called docks. Normally, there is one dock per parish, and groups within a parish must choose to have their own docks. Or rather, groups within a parish might choose to have their own docks. GoFish Global is pastor friendly. GoFish is fitted with a position within the dock called the dock liaison with whom a pastor can communicate in order to manage things as he deems necessary. Note, typically, if the bishop wishes to communicate something to a given dock, they will contact the pastor first. In some cases, the bishop and pastor might have an agreement in which the bishop can communicate things directly to the dock liaison. Establishing a dock and recruiting dock hands. A dock is a crew that is prayerfully chosen to establish, support, and help keep afloat the gophis structure within a parish or a standalone ministry. Members of this crew are referred to as dock hands. They are usually chosen with the aid of the parish pastor someone designated by the bishop or pastor, or by a GoFish representative from outside of that parish or diocese. The port liaison and expansionists help recruit the first five dock hands of every dock. Those five are called the dock startup team. You can have numerous docks across a diocese. For instance, you could have one dock per parish in a diocese, plus a dock for every standalone ministry, ministries not associated with a particular parish. And some groups within a parish might choose to have their own docks. The next few slides will explain the dock hands titles and duties. Dock names. Docks are named after the parish they serve. For example, the dock for St. Brendan Parish would be called the St. Brendan Dock. Docks for parish ministries that prefer to have their own dock are named after the parish and ministry they serve. For example, the dock for the New Life Retreat Community of St. Timothy Parish would be called the St. Timothy New Life Dock. Docks for standalone ministries, ministries that are not related to a parish, as would be the case for a diocesan-wide retreat community, are named after the ministry they serve. For example, the dock for the Corsillo retreat community, if not linked to a parish, would be called the Corsillo dock. All of the dock hands must be able to attend all of the monthly training sessions, and during the dock training expeditions, they must be able to perform as fishers. This is a suggested requirement to be able to become part of the docks. They set the example for their parishes. Dock hand titles and duties. The first five titles on the list below make up the dock startup team. They are recruited by the port liaison and possibly expansionists. These five people are then responsible for recruiting and building the rest of the dock within their parish. The first dock hand is the dock liaison, part of the startup team. During and after the initial dock has been built at their parish, 
the primary role of the dock liaison is that of being the person through whom bishops, pastors, the port liaison, the entire gofish net, and the diocesan sounding board communicates with the dock. Unlike the port liaison who must establish a 5-9 to nine person diocesan sounding board for the port, the dock acts as the sounding board for all parish crews. It is a resource to which crews turn for feedback on any topic whenever any given crew deems it necessary. Dock hands should be wise and neutral. The dock liaison develops a solid relationship, even an alliance, with as many ministries in their parish as possible in order to inspire them to do outreach and evangelization in addition to what those ministries already do. They recruit dock hands when they retire or are burned out and must retire. And they send feedback from the dock, parish net, and parishioners to the port, the diocesan support crew. This feedback includes the dock's monthly financial reports. The second dock hand is the dock spiritual coordinator. Again, part of the dock startup team. Spiritual preparation is priority number one. Prayer, confession, mass, Eucharist, and more. Therefore, their job includes continuously encouraging the dock hands to do those things. They pray for the parish net and leads prayer at dock meetings. They inform the parish net about upcoming retreats and spiritual experiences and education around the diocese and encourages it to attend those opportunities. They help send all participants, including themselves, to retreats offered by the port, their dock, other docks, and others as well. They encourage all members of the parish's net to pray regularly. And they instruct all dock hands on the burnout mechanism, see chapter 10, before the dock hands begin fulfilling their roles. If necessary, they apply the burnout mechanism to burned out dock hands. The third dock hand is the dock meeting coordinator. Again, a part of the dock startup team. They primarily prepare the itinerary for all dock meetings, schedules. They schedule, announce, and coordinate and serve by presiding over dock meetings. They run meetings as workshops to minimize discussion to what is necessary and to maximize output. That is to say, although planning and discussing what the dock should do is important, only a little amount of time should be spent on such things. The majority of the time should be spent having every dock hand carry out their duties. If a particular dock hand's duties have already been done, then the dock meeting coordinator should have that dock hand help another dock hand with their duties or have them help the rest of the dock with the task that they are undertaking as a team. The dock meeting coordinator identifies at least three other dock hands to attend dock deanery meetings. Dioceses are sometimes divided into groups of parishes that are intended to work together. Each of those groups of parishes are a deanery. The meetings about which we speak here are meetings where the docks of the parishes within each deanery meet to discuss plans to work together on outreach and evangelization efforts. They also ensure that at least three other dock hands also attend all dock deanery meetings called by the port meeting coordinator. The fourth, dock train, the fourth dock hand is the dock training coordinator, again, part of the dock startup team. They recruit as large of a dock training crew as necessary to help carry out the tasks required of this role. They inform the dock about the gofishglobal.org website and teaches them how to use it. They point out other training sources as defined by their bishop and or pastor. They learn and teach about the different spiritualities and cultures that make up part of the Catholic Church, especially the ones found within their parish and diocese. They encourage every dock hand to attend at least 4 out of 12 monthly port training sessions a year, and all crews within their parish to attend at least one per year, pastor permitting. They give a 5 to 10 minute church teaching at every dock meeting, which addresses first matters about which their parish's geographical area seems to struggle, then other catechism teachings. Primarily, their role is to offer monthly dock training sessions. See you next slide but they can also schedule additional training sessions like Bible studies and catechism classes. If short on time, CDs and online videos could be used to teach. Mock training sessions for all methods presented help trainees see how methods look before using them. Doc Training Coordinator continued. Yes, primarily, they train their respective parishes net using the best practices available and covering A, the GoFish Global Outreach and Evangelization Training, the full O&E, 
Unless adjusted by a bishop or pastor, this is the standard training that is offered at every port and dock training session. It is intended to be a quick way to get people started. But there exist many more extensive ways to prepare for outreach and evangelization, and the dock training coordinator should point out to the trainees sources from which other methods can be learned, particularly if they are working well within their diocese. B. Legal ways to discuss God in the public school system. Seek the advice of organizations in your country. Gateways to Better Education, gtbe.org, offers this information in the U.S. Free legal defense services for those sued for speaking about God is offered in the U.S. by the Alliance Defense Fund, the ADF, and the Liberty Council. Contact them to help you find such information in your country if you can't find it. C. They teach basic human resource management. For example, they identify the top skills, gifts, and personalities, etc., D, they identify, motivate, and recruit highly motivated parishioners willing to carry out their own missions. And E, they teach how and why to be open to ideas that arise within their parish. The fifth doc hand, which is also the fifth and last doc startup team member, is the doc recruitment coordinator. They primarily coordinate the recruiting by the dock of parishioners to fill the roles of boats, fishers, packers, and shippers. They help the dock liaison recruit individuals to fill vacant dock hand positions. They help build crews around one or more people who are interested in carrying out a particular mission. They help crews get organized and define their mission, if they are interested in being helped, of course. They categorize all participants by the missions to which they feel called, the gifts they possess, and demographics. This will help the dock identify crews within their parish that would be best suited for the new fisher. Note, clearly the number of those who will participate within the GoFish global structure and concept, net, will vary by parish. So those five dock hands make up the dock startup team. The people to fill these five positions are recruited by the port liaison or by expansionists. You will hear more about expansionists later. These five people are then responsible for recruiting and building the rest of their particular doc. Now let's continue with the rest of the doc titles and roles. The sixth doc hand is the doc expedition coordinator. Primarily, they coordinate logistics, setup matters for all monthly doc training expeditions. They manage fishers, which include the trainees that come to these training presentations and all the doc hands during the dock training expeditions. With permission from the pastor, they send parishioners to port fishing training uh, sessions so they can learn to fish alongside others from around the diocese. They encourage the dock hands to attend at least four out of 12 port training sessions a year, pastor permitting, and the parish nets members to attend at least one port training session a year. They study the geographical area covered by their parish and use this information to help find ideal monthly training expedition locales. They regularly motivate their dock hands to attend at least four out of 12 port training sessions a year, one every three months, and they encourage their parish nets to attend one port training session per year. If approved by the pastor, they encourage crews to carry out expeditions for the missions recommended by GoFish Global, such as the missions to public schools within the parish's geographical zone. This is one of the most incisive missions suggested by GoFish Global. Note. In addition to keeping trainees aware of various methodologies, port training sessions offer encouragement because participants see they are on a diocesan-wide team. They are not alone on this mission of outreach and evangelization. This is a key element of Go Fish Global. The seventh dock hand is the Dock Packers and Shippers Coordinator. They primarily manage the dock packers and shippers to ensure that they carry out their duties in a timely manner. Note. Dock packers and shippers process all fish caught during the dock training expedition, as well as all fish caught by the entire parish net, excluding those caught by groups within a parish who prefer to have their own docks and process their own fish. They aid the expedition coordinator by categorizing all participants at all dock training sessions by the gifts they possess and by demographics. This might help the dock expedition coordinator assign duties to the trainees. With the pastor's permission, they help encourage dockhands to get parishioners at least one monthly port training session per year 
so they can learn to fish with others from the diocese. They encourage dock hands to attend at least 4 out of 12 port training sessions a year and keep attendance records. Attending one every three months is a suggested requirement for boat hands. They find out from the dock shippers which fish have found a home in the church and invite those fish lovingly to become boats and or fishers and join the outreach effort at their parishes. See also the explanation on boats and fishers in the o and &E Outreach and Evangelization Training presentation. The eighth dock hand is the dock welcoming event coordinator. They must be a dynamic people person that can work with multiple people and multiple personalities simultaneously while remaining graceful under pressure. They must have a professional background in event production with a solid understanding of the potential, spiritual, and psychological needs of the fish and other attendees. They must understand the importance of event design as well. It is important to have no expectations of turnout, but high expectations regarding social, spiritual, and psychological impact. First, they must become well-trained on the GoFish welcoming event methods. Then, they must recruit and train the dock welcoming event crew on how to put on dynamic and highly attractive welcoming events. See Chapter 8 to find out their titles and roles. Primarily, they set up and coordinate monthly welcoming events called GoFish Dock Welcoming Events, be they purple or blue. If they're purple, they're on church grounds. If they're blue, they're off of church grounds. Very important, they set up at least one monthly parish welcoming event, usually a purple event, per commonly spoken language at their parish, designed to be appealing for those within the demographic pool in that parish. They also encourage the parish's net to send their fish to the port welcoming events, but only if the pastor permits this. They communicate with the packers and shippers to ensure that they are carrying out their tasks correctly and in a timely manner. This will help get more people to the dock welcoming events. The ninth dock hand is the dock website development coordinator. They carefully study the latest website design methods to develop an attractive website for the parish in order to help the fish feel as though they are joining a special community of God. They communicate with other website development coordinators around the diocese, and even those from other dioceses, in order to exchange ideas for a better website. With time, it could be discovered that an attractive, canned website could be used. This individual should be a professional website de developer and must have the time to dedicate to this project. They should also have as many helpers as necessary to ensure that this job gets done in a timely manner. The 10th dock hand is the dock creative coordinator. Primarily, they work closely with a dock welcoming event coordinator to help develop a welcoming event that is of a quality comparable to the most attractive secular nightlife hotspots in the local area. They seek and manage the best videographers, designers, copywriters, event designers, etc. that will offer services pro bono or at least at a price the port agrees upon. They create the fish welcoming DVD that explains what fish should expect to find, good and bad, within the Catholic Church. This DVD is to be played for fish upon entering the dock welcoming event for the first time. The DVD must be done professionally, taking into account the findings of top spirituality and psychology experts in order to help the fish understand why it is important that they remain in the church. It would be convenient to have it on DVD because the welcoming event coordinator could then have someone play it for the fish attending the welcoming event on any computer that plays DVDs. They create a video responding to most common attacks against the Catholic Church. This could be posted online and the fish could be directed to watch it. If needed, it could also be put on DVD so that it could be played on any computer on site. Note, while there will be one or more such videos on the gofishglobal.org website for you to use, it could be helpful to, ma to make videos that are specific to the local area. Ideas can always be taken from videos and cut and pasted onto your videos. Uh, you can find them on gofishglobal.org. The 11th dock hand is the dock ecumenical promoter and liaison. This is a sensitive position to be carried out by a suitable individual. They must be well trained on the GoFish global concept. Primarily, they promote the GoFish system to non-Catholic Christian churches in their parish's geographical area. They can work with the port ecumenical promoter and liaison to develop relationships with the non-Catholic Christian pastors in their geographical area, especially if they seem to be having a difficult time with a pastor from a particular non-Catholic Christian church. Sometimes the gifts of the port's ecumenical promoter and liaison could facilitate a relationship. If necessary, request, they request the help of members of other Christian denominations in order to acquire meetings with their pastors 
at which a GoFish Global presentation could be given. And they keep track of all communications with the representatives of the various churches with whom they have spoken. The details of previous conversations could be very useful during follow-up calls to help kindle more personal relationships. The twelfth doc hand is the doc finance manager. This person must be dynamic and gifted in the area of fundraising. If any of the other doc hands or anyone else are willing to work to make money for the doc, that is admissible. All doc hands are encouraged to request donations for the doc. The doc finance manager puts together a budget which covers the doc's needs. They manage the funds of the doc. Doc, doc funds are primarily to be used for the outreach and evangelization efforts carried out during the doc training sessions. The fund's secondary purpose is to support the recruiting of parish net members, new crews with boats and fishers, packers and shippers, etc. They handle accounting and prepare monthly financial statements which will include at minimum a balance sheet and an income statement for the doc. These reports must include full disclosure of all funds that come in as well as those that went out and the beginning balance for one month must be the ending balance for the previous month. They submit financial reports to the DOC liaison, who will in turn submit them to the port liaison. So here is your DOC startup team in white first. The DOC liaison, spiritual coordinator, meeting coordinator, training coordinator, and the DOC recruitment coordinator. Note, the port does not have this position. The rest of the DOC, includes the expedition coordinator, packers and shippers coordinator, welcoming event coordinator, website development coordinator, creative coordinator, ecumenical liaison and promoter, and the finance manager. The next slide presents the doc hands with pictures for each. First we'll cover the doc startup team in white. The doc liaison, spiritual coordinator, meeting coordinator, training coordinator, and recruitment coordinator. The others are the Packers and Shippers Coordinator, the Welcoming Event Coordinator, the Website Development Coordinator, the Website Entry Personnel, the Creative Coordinator, the Ecumenical Liaison and Promoter, and the Finance Manager. The doc should always be mindful of the role of promoting the evangelization of the geographical area assigned to their parish, with one of the primary missions being to legally evangelize everyone in the public school system. Multiple varied and even creative missions might arise. Expeditions should be scheduled and announced in some way so that all parishioners will know they are needed for this effort. Docs are an important tool for non-parish-based groups. Non-parish-based groups. Some ministries, like certain retreats and seasonal ministries, might not be tied to a parish. They have the option to create their own doc, to use a willing parish's dock, or to use the port itself to support their fishing efforts. The fisher's morale is enhanced by the success of the outreach efforts as well as how effectively the fish are connected to their ministry or other place within the church. The docks can be an important aid in connecting the fish to these non-parish based groups or other place within the church. Preliminary instructions for port hands and dock hands. Before one begins in a role as a port hand or a dock hand, please note that it is an honor to serve on a port or a dock. These roles are positions of responsibility that must be carried out with the same level of seriousness with which one carries out one's profession. You must be on time to meetings and do what you are required to do. Volunteers must be fully responsible. It is a good idea for you to have a backup person that can fill in during the times that you are not capable of fulfilling your duties. The port or dock liaisons must remind port hands and dock hands that the length of time they can hold their positions is between six months and two years. Once the two years is up, they must retire from the port or their dock. The port hands must continue to carry out their duties because an entire diocese of docks is relying on them. The dock hands must continue to carry out their duties because their parish and their parish's outreach and evangelization crews are relying on them. All port hands and dock hands whose six month to two year terms have expired should retire and seek their replacement. If before their six month to two year term expires, they are unable to carry out their responsibilities, they should inform their respective port or dock that they are retiring. Please see chapter 10, Burnout Mechanism, for instructions on what to do when a port hand or dock hand does not or cannot carry out their duties. GoFish Global is constantly trying to better itself. If possible, please use your mobile phones to email us quick ideas on how to make this presentation better to info at gofishglobal.org or when you have more time to type out the ideas 
please send them from your computer. Congratulations, you survived. You have just finished watching the Structure Training Full Structure Chapter 4 of its 14 chapter presentation. When ready to continue, please open and play the file entitled Structure Training Full Structure Chapters 5 through 9. Thank you for answering God's call.